that are proposing the mandatory registration of SIM cards in the Philippines. The, their proponents are seeking their passage as a way to curb the proliferation of crime in the country. Mismo, sa 20 national ICT tools survey and of information and communications SMS fraud or maraming big out of 2015 respondents all country 6840 individuals have been victimized by tax scam by unregistered Sumahin, isa sa limang tao ang mga gamit ng SIM cards dito sa ating bangga. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit isang daan at limang put limang bansa sa buong mundo ay SIM card registration laws. Part of today's hearing will focus on Senate Bill number 365 which removes the expiration of prepaid local credits. The bill wants to address a situation where the money used by mobile server to purchase their prepits are not being utilized in its entirety. public. In short, sa kalusapuyang setup, nalulugi ang ating mga kababayan. Finally, the third part of this bill will focus on Senate Bill Number 1880, which requires our system for subscribers of all internet service providers. Use allocation will not expire, but will carry over to the succeeding and Despite being one of the slowest, the 2020 World Bank are charging the fourth highest of CN at around 315 pesos per 500 megabytes or of prepaid mobile connection close to the internet cost in Singapore and Thailand where speeds are faster. Ang bagal at ang mahal ng internet nag expire pa. We heard of instances when data allocation of many subscribers for three days. While we need to prioritize the consumer's rights and welfare, this hearing must be fair and reasonable for all parties involved. Our guests and resource persons were invited precisely to accord due respect and to listen to their sentiments and thoughtful recommendations. If they will interpose any objections based on factual or scientific data, this is also the venue to present them. Before I yield the floor to my fellow senators who are joining us today, my request of committee to read out the names of the resource persons who are present for the record. Good morning, Your Honors. For today's virtual public hearing, we have the following resource persons. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Undersecretary Arnold Atienza. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Assistant Secretary Anne Claire C. Cabochan. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Job Gayas, Executive Officer of the Technical Intelligence Division, and Mr. Victor V. Lorenzo, of, a Chief of the Cybercrime Division, NDI. From the Department of Justice, we have Assistant Secretary Nicholas L.P. From the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Jonel C. Estomo, Police Brigadier General Armando S. De Leon, Police Brigadier General Celso Bael, and Police Brigadier General Daniel Mayoni. From the PNP Cybercrime Division, we have Police Colonel Joel Bargamento Doria. From the National Privacy Commission, we have Attorney Ivy Grace Villasoto and Attorney Russell Domingo. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Ms. Lynn Javier, Managing Director of Policy and Specialized Supervision Subsector, and Mr. Melchor T. Plabasan, Director of the Technology Risk and Innovation Supervision Department. From Globe Telecom, we have Attorney Ariel B. Tubayan. From Smart Communications, 
We have attorney Roy Cecil Ibay. From PLDT, we have attorney Kevin Pangan and attorney Eileen Rejillo. From Dito Telecoms, we have attorney Adele Tamano. And from democracy.net.ph, we have engineer Tito Pierre Gala. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. I'd like to Lapid is our questions. I we can have an opening from one of our senators. Main authors of this. Madam, Madam Chair, you're breaking up. Uh, this is the irony. Is uh, it's a internet service providers. I think ayaw yata nila para register yung mga sim cards. Um, <laughs> Senator Gachalian, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you, ma'am, but you're breaking up a bit. Okay, I'll, I'll turn off. I'll turn off my video. Hopefully, this is better. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yes, okay. much better, uh, much better. So, uh, okay, Senator Gachalian, do you have an opening statement, sir? Y yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, let me thank the good uh, chairperson for hearing these two bills um, a, a few months ago, I mean, a few months, a few weeks ago, uh, my uh, credit card was scammed. And the mode that they use is to fool the bank into giving my personal number. And when they got my personal number, I can no longer get my OTP. And they managed to transact and buy one million's worth of alcohol using my credit card. But uh, upon uh, investigating, the bank told me that uh, the scammer used a prepaid card to call the bank and change my number. And then when they tried to call that prepaid card and uh, seek the help of the PNP to uh, track that card, they cannot uh, find uh, the card anymore and they don't have any information on who owns that uh, prepaid card. Uh, this is just one of the millions of examples, ma'am, of how scammers use the prepaid card to scam, to, uh, to uh, get vital information, to uh, get uh, credit card information, change the OTP, and even intimidate and, um, and, and, um, and, and um, uh, create crimes. Uh, that's why, Madam Chair, I, I, I thank you for hearing this bill because um, the prepaid is a tool for, to enable our constituents to afford uh, telecommunications and even uh, data. Uh, obviously, uh, unscrupulous people have been using the prepaid card to um, uh, to retrieve illegal and also uh, create crimes uh, to the detriment of our constituents. It's now become a tool for criminals to um, perpetuate their uh, criminal acts. Uh, that's why, Madam Chair, it's, I think, imperative to um, uh, get this law uh, a, a, a brief uh, overview on where we are compared to other countries. Out of the 21 nations, 155 already has a mandated SIM card policy, prepaid SIM card policy. That's 71% of the entire nations of the world, now, meaning 71% have some form or even legislated prepaid SIM card registration. Uh, in so far as the uh, uh, the no expiry of load, Madam Chair, uh, this is very timely in the in, in light of the pandemic because a lot of our children use uh, or buy prepaid load to enable them to study or to continue to study, and um, it's we have a law already. When you buy your prepaid load, that's yours. And uh, it, it's, it's up to you to use it. It's up to you to uh, consume it. 
um, we should not put any expiry date uh, to pressure the consumers to use the load that they put themselves. So again, thank you very much, Madam Chair, for hearing these two bills. And uh, I'm, I look forward in uh, hearing our source. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. Sorry, I just have my mic on. Uh, thank you, uh, Sen Aimi, for calling my attention. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Aimi Marco. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Sorry. Uh, I'm yeah, still talking. No, I'm not okay. one of the authors, well, but I just like to uh, listen in on the resource speakers and at the same time posit some uh, uh, informa uh, request for information that they can possibly answer while they are present. Um, with regard to the limp to the registration of SIM cards, I can well understand the reasons for this. However, um, given the difficulty of uh, obtaining ID requirements in our country and the uh, um, very um, uh, recent rollout of the national ID, how do we facilitate this? And um, secondly, I think it's only limited to children 15 and uh, above. Uh, that not, doesn't include a lot of the school kids carrying cell phones and uh, single mothers who rely almost entirely on the information by text. Uh, also, there are questions about privacy, but of course we support this. And uh, with regard to the prepaid load, I'd like to ask the NPC uh, in their presentation to explain if there's a technical rationale for implementing such expiration, some bagmulayan, and how much prepaid load actually expired in the last two years. Thank you. That would be all. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Um, is is my signal better? Okay, good. Um, actually, the top five cyber scam incidents, according to 2019, is number one SMS fraud or text scam. Hacking, cyberbullying, cyber libel, phishing, and others. Now, I understand the concern of Senator Aini, and I'm glad that she raised it because really the problem sometimes is uh, how we can uh, all of the all of all of the requirements involved, and if this is something that will actually be effective. Number one, and number two, will we actually be able to implement it? So. Let us now begin with a line of questionings. Maybe I should uh, yield the floor to our author uh, of this bill. Senator Gachalian, would you like to begin with your questions? Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, I, I, uh, Senator Lito Lapid, who's, now, who's also the sponsor of one of the bills, which is the non-expiration of the, the load, the internet load. Um, Senator Lapid, you're recognized, sir. Good morning. Magandang umaga po, uh, Chairwoman Grace po. At ang aking mga kasamaan, mga senador at mga resource person. Uh, meron po akong uh, opening statement. Uh, isusumitin ko na lang po sa record. Lalo na po itong uh, magandang uh, panukala natin, itong rollover. Senate Bill uh, 1880. Isusumitin ko na lang po sa record. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Lapid. Yung mga bills talaga ni Senator Lapid, alam niya, yung, yung mga nararamdaman talaga ng ating mga kababayan, yung lalong-lalo na yung pinaka maliliit, mga, yung pinaka mahihirap na bawat piso ay importante. So maraming salamat, uh, Senator Lapid. Salamat po. Salamat po. Okay. Um, who would like to begin with their questions? Senator Gachalian? Madam Chair, uh, with your kind permission, uh, I would like to request the PNP. I saw their presence here. I would like to request them to uh, brief us on uh, cyber, crime, cyber crime, uh, crimes perpetuated by cell phones or prepaid cards, 
uh, crimes perpetuated online, uh, this type of crimes, Madam Chair. So my perspective here is criminal acts have been committed using prepaid card, and it's good to appreciate the gravity of this problem through the report of the PNP. That is a, yeah, thank, thank you again also for reminding me. Um, if there are any presentations from the PNP or the telcos, uh, we should uh, go ahead and have that now. Let's begin with the PNP, please. Madam Chair, may I be recognized? Yes, what good morning, sir. The Executive Officer of the Director for Intelligence. Before I refer the answer of the, to the question of Senator Gachalian, that would be referred to the ACG. May I be allowed to read the opening statement of my director, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. On, on behalf of the Director for Intelligence, Police Major General Amando Clifton B. Impeso, I would like to relay the opening statement of him as I quote, over the years, mobile telecommunication has significantly evolved with the advent of new technologies. However, these developments have also spawned new opportunities for criminal entities and other lawless individuals to advance their illegal acts. While it is not implemented in the Philippines, prepaid subscriber identity module or SIM card registration is mandated in a number of countries and is a policy espoused by some governments to address acts of criminality and other security concerns. The Philippine National Police wishes to thank the Committee on Public Service and the Committee on Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship for this opportunity to participate in this public hearing, deliberating on the legislative measures which delves primarily in the regulation, use and distribution of prepaid SIM cards. We welcome these developments, especially with the increasing use of mobile phones in crimes and other illegal and terrorist activities. Taking advantage of the anonymity provided by unregistered SIM cards, which can be easily disposed to avoid law enforcement tracking and interception. The PNP is optimistic that the study of these measures would be a fundamental backbone to law enforcement, especially in supporting intelligence and investigative work to curb text scams, access, extortion, bombing operations, and other cyber crimes using unregistered SIM cards. We also look forward to take part in discussing other security concerns that may arise from the implementation of these measures including potential crime displacement, like emergence of black markets for stolen SIMs, and issues on data security and privacy risks, which are very contentious subjects in these times. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I refer the question of uh, Senator Gachalian to the representative of the anti cybercrime crime group of the Philippine National Police? We have online, Madam Chair, Police Colonel Doria, I think um, since it was already brought up by Senator Gachalian, if there are other opening statements or presentations from our resource persons present here today, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, none. Um, Senator Gachalian, would you like to begin your questions? Madam Chair, uh, with us also is uh, NBI, and uh, NBI also has a very sophisticated unit tracking down uh, cyber crimes and online crime. Uh, with your kind indulgence, maybe also hear from them um, their uh, views on this. Uh okay, um, I, I will turn off my camera again because, again, my signal is not very good. Uh, let, may we hear from the representative of the NBI present here today? Um, Madam Chair, I'm Victor Lorenzo. I'm the chief of the Cyber Time Division. Good morning po. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, ganun din po sa amin, uh, equally uh, concerned kami on the unregistered 
uh, SIM cards uh, because we, in all the cases that we have been investigating, nagtatago ho yung mga cyber criminals uh, using prepaid cards. And it is really very hard for us to track down first their location and at the same time yung identity nila. And that's why we really uh, fully support yung SIM registration acts, ma'am. Uh, considering that we believe that it could have uh, it could contribute uh, in the identification of uh, yung mga cyber criminals. Uh, we must accept that there will be challenges because anonymity is the name of the game and the cyber criminals or criminals will try to anonymize themselves. But at least yung, when we register our SIM cards, it will be a starting point. And we can uh, start from there in investigation and we could follow their trail. That's why, again, ma'am, we really fully support the SIM Registration Act. And we would like to thank you for this initiative. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, any Anyone else you'd like to hear from, Senator Gachalian? We have, uh, we have also a representative from the DOJ, um, also from the telcos. Senator Gachalian? Nawalan din ata ng connection. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, yes. I'd uh, like to also hear from DOJ. Uh, DOJ has a very good, a big group that deals with human trafficking. And uh, human trafficking also uh, is a grave concern here in our country. And the mode of... Um, prepaid card once again no prepaid unregistered prepaid card so it, it's also good ma'am to uh, hear oh okay uh, madam chair this is uh, just a second time it, may, may i be recognized Yes, as, asset uh, T, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your question, Senator Gachalian. Um, in response to your question, um, the DOJ does recognize that there are various concerns, various other concerns that call for the registration of prepaid SIM cards. And it's not just the concern that you, that you earlier raised, it's just a concern on, on, on financial fraud and scams. But you also raised another concern, which is human trafficking, and and you're correct there, and and that in some and in some instances, human trafficking can be perpetrated using prepaid SIM cards, and are successfully perpetrated um, by means of the anonymity uh, anonymity accorded by prepaid SIM cards. At the same time, we also recognize that there are other uh, other crimes or other evils that can also be facilitated by the use of prepaid SIM cards. And I believe these were highlighted in some of the explanatory notes of some of the bills. Some of these other crimes include, include, include terrorism. Um, that is the reason why in the position paper we are currently preparing, which will eventually forward to the committee, um, the Department of Justice has no constitution, sees no constitutional or legal objection to the passage of these laws. Uh, I'm sorry, the passage of these bills. However, we do have some minor things that we want to point out, uh, very minor details that don't really, that don't, that, that shouldn't really serve as a significant obstacle. Um, these will be highlighted in our position paper, but for maybe for, for brevity, we'll just cite them now. Um, some of the concerns include um, the penal provision. Like some, we noted that some of the bills um, penalize certain, certain activity or certain certain omissions that are already penalized by other laws. A good example would be the penalty imposed on, on telcos and other and other uh, uh, telcos to on, uh, on the disclosure, no, the unauthorized disclosure of the of the private data of their subscribers. Um, we believe that this 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 omission is already penalized by another law, in this case the Data Privacy Act. And that's the reason why we think that um, such provisions in the bill should be reconciled with the Data Privacy Act. Um, again, Your Honor, these these minor recommendations on our part will be highlighted in our bill. But above but above all, 
when it comes to the 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 the, the idea of the passage of these bills, we have no objection. Thank you, thank you for allowing us to be heard, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Asek P. I I see the hand of Senator Marcos raise it. If you would you like to interject, I, if it's still the time of uh, Senator Gachalian, go ahead. Oh, if, uh, if, uh, with the indulgence Senator of Senator Gachalian, Gachalian. Will allow. I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, pa. Yes, I'm sorry, Senator Gachalian. Hindi ko kayo nakikita kasi sa virtual eh. Akala ko tapos na. If you don't mind, I'd just like to follow up since the law enforcement uh, teams are here. They're all present. Um, what if just playing the devil's advocate? Um, in um, in opposition to this bill, um, many have said that it's not a question of registering the SIM card. Even in Europe and in the U.S., there are prepaid SIM cards, no need to register, available in every kiosk around town. It's not a problem of SIM card reg registration. It's more importantly a bank security problem. Sinasabi ng iba na hacking is all about looking for the security breaks in bank security. And uh, this is the most important in uh, cybercrime. Uh, that we actually strengthen our departments and oblige our telcos to coordinate and report very closely. And thereafter, use phone location, which is uh, already highly developed everywhere, including the Philippines, and uh, that will fight crime much more effectively than the onerous requirements of SIM card registration. Just throwing it out there to be uh, difficult. Would you like to um, address the concern of Senator Marcos? Were you addressing it too, Senator Marcos? Yes, I'd like to ask uh, the NBI, the DOJ, the PNP, in as much as they're involved in law enforcement. Kasi marami rin kasing uh, SIM card, hindi naman rin na-registro talaga sa US at saka sa Europe. Ang sabi, ang problema yung security natin. Hindi yung problema kaya na pahihirapin lahat ng bibili at uh, obligado sila mag-register, may edad pa, may ID pa, may limitasyon pa sa tatlo. Um, I was just uh, wondering if, in fact, phone location and all these other technologies would not be, uh, if strengthened, a far more uh, effective way of tracing cybercrime. Um, maybe we'd begin with uh, NBI. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Again, uh, Madam Senator, thank you yes, for that question. Yes, uh -huh. uh, um, uh, It's a very good point. But from the law enforcement point of view, ma'am, kailangan lang magkaroon kami ng starting point. Let's go to a specific case, ma'am. For example, uh, uh, a bank has been hacked. Meron, sir, ma'am, yung third portion yan, yung mga money mules involved. Kasi kailangan mo i-withdraw yung funds that you were able to steal from a particular bank. We need to follow that. Nakita na namin yun, mami. There were so many mules that we were able to identify because they were they registered their, their accounts with money transmitters. Ang link lang namin dun, ma'am, are the mobile phones that are mostly, or all of them are prepaid. So dun sa money mules, ma'am, it it's really very hard for us kapag wala kang starting point na pag in identifying them and determining kung saan ang areas of operation nila. That's why yung SIM registration will really have uh, law enforcement just to identify yung behavior ng mga other actors ng, for example, nga, yung hacking. Oo. Pero Vic, yung sinasabi nila na develop naman yung phone location, technology. Alam naman natin kung saan yung tao eh, kahit walang registration ng SIM card. Anong tingin mo ron? Uh, tama yun, ta tama yun ma'am. Uh, we could use that and it could actually help us in identifying yung location ng mga perpetrators o mga hackers. But again ma'am, you could easily, ang makikita namin yung areas of operation nila eh. We need that. And we always follow the money trail. Kapag ka dito mo binidro a specific location na to ma'am, that will be a good lead for us on what particular uh, organized group is operating or supported or participated in the offense uh, committed. For example, nga yung hacking. 
ko. Thank you. Thank you sa NBI. Thank you, Ms. Senator Gatsalian at sa Chair Grace. Uh, we're very well aware and I know that the chairwoman is also the chairwoman um, para sa ating uh, banking at uh, napakarami na talagang uh, cyber banking issues ng ating mga banko. Halos linggo-linggo na pinapabalitaan na nagkaroon ng uh, cyber crime. So, thank you. And maybe uh, the other law enforcers would like to weigh in too. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Um, any other reaction? Um, Senator Gachalian, would you like to continue? Yes, Madam Chair. I would like to ask the PNP anti cyber crime, crime group uh, just basic statistics, uh, sirs. Um, ilang ba ang uh, mga ilang ba ang mga krimen na ginagamit ang prepaid SIM cards uh, over the past few years? I know there was a serious uh, crime, no, a bombing that happened in uh, Cagayan de Oro a few years back. Actually, that was the one that prompted me to file this bill, and uh, it killed a lot of doctors. There was a um, uh, a doctor's convention there. And when the PNP tried to track down the, the syndicate or the criminal, uh, they couldn't find them because they used, the, they used uh, a prepaid SIM card as their triggering device. So uh, I just want to ask the PNP and their cyber, uh, cyber crime group some basic statistics. Ilang ba ho ang, uh, in the past five years, ang mga crimes na ginamit po ang prepaid SIM cards? Uh, ilang ba ang narisolva? At, at ilang ba ang uh, crime doon na, uh, na tingin nyo kayang i-resolve ba kung meron tayong um, registration ng prepaid SIM card? Um, thank you very much, sir. Um, Madam Chair, Senator Grace Paul, and uh, Senator Gatchalian, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for that uh, question. And for the part of the uh, PNP Anti-Cyber Crime Group, we fully support the approval of the uh, uh, passage of the various Senate bills on mandatory SIM card. For the uh, statistics, sir, for 2020 alone, we have recorded 6,110 cybercrime offenses uh, reported to our unit. Uh, the top five are the uh, online scam. Number two is the uh, online libel. We have also the uh, computer-related identity theft. We have the uh, RA9995 or the uh, anti-photo and video voyeurism. And number five is the uh, Article 282 of the uh, RPC in relation to Section 6 of the Republic Act 10175 or the threat. And uh, for the specific uh, cases using uh, uh, cell phone or the SIM card, Mostly are from the uh, money remittance uh, application. We have re uh, recorded 274 uh, cases, of which um, when we requested the, those uh, concerns for the uh, data of the uh, owner of those uh, uh, SIM card or mobile number, they always uh, respond, uh, their legal officer or legal counsel always uh, invoke the Data Privacy Act and we are uh, required to apply for a uh, court order. And uh, it is uh, true that uh, some cell phones are used as triggering device also in detonating uh, IEDs or the improvised uh, explosive device. Uh, sir, we have these statistics. I believe uh, we will be submitting uh, this data uh, as an attachment also to the position paper uh, prepared by the ACG, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, I see the hand uh, of uh, Engineer Gala. Would you like to react on the statement so far? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, will you allow me to uh, write, to, to say my notes so far from the discussion? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, also to the senators and the various research speakers in attendance. I'll, I'll keep this as short as possible. 
depending on the use case, SIM registration can be useful or SIM registration can be useless and an additional problem instead of a solution. In countries where SIM registration was implemented for purposes of mobile governance or M governance and M commerce or mobile commerce, SIM registration has helped particularly as an alter alternative means of KYC, uh, know your customer, which is why I am personally gratified to see that the Banco Central of the Philippines is in attendance. In countries where SIM registration was implemented primarily for purposes of law enforcement, SIM registration has proved ineffective and has created new and additional criminal activities related to circumventing SIM registration. In general, SIM registration is described by various international advocates as, on balance, less than ideal. While it can be implemented for use cases such as banking the unbanked and providing government services to the underserved, it restricts the space for free expression, for fearless, fair, and free journalism, for the democratic principles of unfettered organization and communication, and for the right of citizens to be left alone and to express themselves freely to others. While SIM registration has had some success in M-commerce and M-governance, it has likewise been abused by governments and law enforcement to make generalized dragnet surveillance easier to facilitate, easier and to facilitate the tracking and monitoring of people, whether lawfully or unlawfully without right, and have been used by governments or their agencies for political, religious, or and even ethnic and racial persecution. There are now 155 countries in the world that have adopted mandatory SIM registration. All of these countries and their SIM registration approaches have been criticized for various reasons. A number of them have had their SIM registration laws challenged successfully in their courts, again, for various reasons. We know of at least one country that has repealed their SIM registration laws for not being effective for the use cases they have sought SIM registrations as a solution for. Two examples stand out. In Mexico, they passed a SIM registration law in 2009 as part of counter-drug, counter-human trafficking, and other anti-criminality operations. The law was repealed in 2012 as it was A, found to be ineffective in counter-drug, human trafficking, and other anti-criminality operations, and B, it created various new illicit and illegal activities such as black market SIM trading, SIM cloning, SIM spoofing, petty theft or robbery of cell phones for the SIM inside them. Also in 2012, in, in the European Union, the European Commission requested that EU states provide evidence of actual or potential benefits from mandatory SIM registration measures. From that study, the European Commission concluded that SIM registrations provided no benefit to assisting criminal investigations. They also concluded that there was no benefit to the common market to having a single European Union approach to SIM registration. That is to say, no best practices could be developed. Based on the modes and technical, technical means of commission of the crimes discussed so far in this hearing, it appears that these fall parallel to the Mexico and EU experience in that SIM registration is not the magic bullet we believe it to be. In summary, while there may be a number of use cases where SIM registration may be useful to a society, there are likewise many use cases that lead to abuse or are by nature abusive. We must be careful in considering the implementation of SIM registration, and if we are to implement it, the law must be crafted specifically for the use case we choose it for. That is, that is all, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, I will uh, wait for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Gala, for that uh, point of view that we need to consider also the effectivity, actually, and, and uh, the comparisons in other countries. Senator Gachanyan, would you like to continue? I would like to acknowledge also the presence of Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Gachanyan, are you... Are you ready? Yes, to Madam Chair. Yeah, well, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, just a reaction. Just a reaction to uh, the comment of Pierre. Uh, I, I, Pierre has been a uh, respected um, uh, resource person, especially when we when it, when we.
Senator Gachalian, I think uh, you were cut off. Um, from the other resource persons present, can you hear Senator Gachalian? So again, the senators are not having the best day in terms of connection. I, I wonder if this is something to do. <laughs> I wonder if this is something to do with those that are opposing our bills right now. <laughs> Um, and it's been weeks, Madam Chair. It's been weeks. Since we're having this <laughs> trouble. And it's always ironically when it comes to telco matters. Um, I, I don't want to say who my provider is, but you know who you are. Please do something about it. Because uh, this con the concerns on, on telco will not end just because we don't have... Um, um, I just got word from the provider that they doubled my bandwidth. <laughs> Pwede pala yun. Um, here, here, Madam Chair. Sabi okay, nga you. ni Dr. Freud, uh, <laughs> even paranoids have enemies po. It's beginning to feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to my provider for doing that. Sana all. Sana all. Sana all. Sana all. Sana, all. Sana more. <laughs> okay. Um... Maybe if uh, we can't hear Senator Gachalian, um, the next that uh, was present, I think, was Senator Zubiri, but I think he's uh, observing at this point. So, uh, Senator Marcos, do you have anything uh, to follow up on the questions that were... I'm sorry, I uh, didn't catch the name of the representative of democracy.net.ph. It appears that we're reading the same stuff. <laughs> Engineer Galia is very well read and researched, so okay, it's possible Okay, okay, thank that you very much. And uh, um, forgive my hesitation about the bill. I know the, uh, the uh, purpose and uh, desire of our uh, law enforcers to finally get a handle on cybercrime, but uh, this may or may not be the way to go about it. Um, our security laws and perhaps the Data Privacy Act itself and uh, the banks and uh, all their uh, security hacks should probably uh, uh, step up and uh, um, do more in terms of cybersecurity. So uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And may I have a copy if there will be a uh, paper? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think Senator Gachalian is in the Senate right now. So I know also the provider in the Senate. Um, please make sure that you um, check on your connection. We've also heard a lot of complaints about it. Uh, maybe I can now ponder the question to the, to the NPC. Um, actually, from the National Privacy Commission, uh, you had your hand raised. Please go ahead. Yes, Madam Chair. Good morning. Um, thank you for um, inviting the NPC in today's um, public hearing. So just a follow-up to Engineer uh, Pierre's comments earlier. Um, the NPC recognizes the clamor for the implementation of the SIM card registration uh, with the purpose of addressing concerns on national security and fighting terrorism and organized crime. But it should be emphasized also that the implementation of this system would entail massive collection of personal data nationwide. Um, this may result in heightened risk of personal data breaches, unauthorized processing, intrusion into the privacy of um, people, and the restriction of other rights and freedoms. We understand that there are 155 countries mandating SIM card registration, but then again, it was also reported that there is really no empirical evidence yet um, that proves that mandatory SIM card registration directly leads to the reduction of crime. As mentioned by Engineer Gala earlier, um, in Mexico nga po, na-repeal yung law nila kasi hindi siya effective for the prevention, investigation, and prosecution of associated crimes. Um, also, um, we wish to emphasize that accurate SIM card registration may have to rely heavily on the honesty of the subscriber Kasi po, when we submit the ID, when we submit the registration form, there may be no way to vet if indeed tama po yung sinabmit. So, um, ngayon po, as mentioned earlier din po by Senator Marcos, iniro-roll out pa lang po yung filsis. So, not everyone will be uh, given a fill ID and a PSN anytime soon. 
So baka po um, hindi po magmatch yung ating SIM card registration um, goals vis-a-vis yung ating pong magkakaroon po tayo ng national ID or the PhilSys. And then the purpose of having the SIM registration for crime prevention. Um, aside from data privacy um, concerns, um, may concern din po kami doon sa maaari pong economic and social factors um, on this SIM registration because some might be um, digitally, socially, and financially excluded kung hindi po sila makapag-register. Kasi we understand that if you're, if you're not able to register your existing prepaid dun sa bills, um, prepaid um, SIMs, ikakat po yung service. So yung po iniiwasan din natin na magkaroon po ng exclusion the vulnerable, vulnerable groups and the geographically remote persons might be significantly negatively affected by by this. Um, so we must um, wa- this warrants for a more judicious assessment if indeed uh, a SIM card registration system will curb um, criminality and prevent or deter terrorism. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, Senator Gachalian, uh, you're you're back online. Are you in the Senate today? Yes, I'm in the Senate today, Pa. Uh, I apologize. The uh, internet here is fluctuating. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. But uh, I believe I'm coming in quite okay now. Madam yes, Chair. you are. Madam we Chair, call- just a quick wrap. We call just a quick wrap. Senator Gachalian. Yeah, go ahead. Just a quick reaction to uh, the statement of Engineer Pierre. Uh, definitely, I have great respects to Engineer Pierre. I've been consulting with him uh, on various telecommunications uh, issues as well as various telecommunication bills. However, we differ in this matter, Madam Chair. While we look at other countries for their experiences and their models, but we have to listen to our own law enforcement agencies, Madam Chair, because they are accountable to us when it comes to uh, safety and uh, order. And Madam Chair, um, we have to give them the tools in order for them to resolve cases. Reporting cases is the easy part, but finding the perpetrator, the criminal, is the most difficult part. And without tools, uh, it will be impossible, virtually impossible for them to um, resolve all of these cases. Uh, I've talked to a lot, when I was a mayor, I talked to a lot of our policemen. And whenever I press them to resolve cases, the dead end is always a prepaid SIM card. And, uh, and this is very frustrating, especially if you're uh, a victim. Uh, a case in point here, the bombing that happened in Cagayan de Oro where eight doctors died. And uh, the triggering device there was a prepaid SIM card. And just imagine talking to their families and tell them, telling them that we cannot resolve the case because the perpetrators use a prepaid SIM card. And it's very frustrating. You know? So while we look at the other countries uh, for their experiences, let's look at our own experiences when it comes to crime fighting. This is not a panacea. Definitely, this is a not the only solution. But it's one of the tools that our law enforcement agencies can use to make our society and our country safe, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. Uh, this is what I plan to do because we have another uh, bill that we need to discuss. So let's try to wrap up uh, the initial topic, which is on SIM card registration. So after Senator Gachalian, um, anybody uh, among my colleagues who would like to... Okay, Senator Joel Villanueva, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, just, just uh, I, I've been listening uh, attentively, and uh, let me just uh, uh, also uh, uh, associate this uh, myself to the uh, statements made by uh, our good friend, our seatmate, brother uh, Senator Sherwin Gachelian. But I just have one question also to uh, to the National Privacy Commission, uh, Madam Chair, with regard to uh, data protection and surveillance of. Uh, user. Uh, nowadays, Madam Chair, they said that uh, data is the uh, new oil 
uh, has the uh, National uh, Privacy Commission encountered any uh, situation where there is data breach from uh, tampered SIM cards? And what sanctions, if any, have you imposed on the uh, perpetrators? Because in the light of the uh, proposal to require a SIM card uh, registration, we wanted to know if uh, indeed our National Privacy Commission is uh, ready and uh, they are uh, already planning uh, uh, to take steps to ensure that the, uh, that the uh, privacy of individuals is protected. Yes, ma Madam Chair, Senator Villanueva. Um, as to the statistics on whether we've received um, uh, notifications on data breaches involving tampered SIM cards, uh, we will get back to you on that. I would have to ask our other division for further statistics. But then again, um, for other um, data breaches reported to us, so we, we've compiled um, all those notifications we've received, those which warrant further investigation are being investigated po by the NPC. Um, currently. So we have a dedicated division po for investigations and another division po for enforcement just in case um, there are already um, orders from the commission to enforce um, either um, re recommendation for prosecution um, in relation to a personal data breach. Madam Chair, Senator Villanueva. Yeah, th th thank you very much for that. No? But uh, I wanted to hear sana uh, what particular steps are you taking or perhaps additional measures, if any, uh, uh, should be, uh, I mean, if this uh, will push through no? and uh, in order for us to protect the privacy of individuals. Because at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure that uh, we'll, if this pushes through, uh, we, we'll be able to ensure that the system is not uh, used as a tool uh, for surveillance. Ayaw naman natin, Madam Chair, na na magkaroon ng uh, ala Big Brother House at abusuhin ang uh, sistemang ito para bigyan o oh, tignan ang lahat ng ating uh, ginagawa. We note that uh, uh, a SIM card is not merely a phone number, a user's uh, online activity, it's a, uh, a location, purchases, move, uh, purchases, movement, can, 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 can be tracked no, through, uh, through, through the SIM card. Thank you, Senator. We can't, we Senator, can't hear you. Senator Villanueva. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, are you waiting for a reaction from the National yes. Privacy Commission? Yes, uh, yes, Attorney, Madam. Attorney Grace, go ahead. Yes, Madam Chair, Senator Villanueva. So, uh, nga po, as mentioned for earlier, we, we do have reservations on having this system in place because we are quite unsure whether we can actually secure such a very large database. Um, at the very start at the outset, di ba po ang, ang, ang yung the bills would require the sellers or the agents or the dealers to, to have the, the buyers, the subscribers who would buy the SIM cards, mag-fill mag, mag out po sila ng registration form. Tapos it would take a few days before masubmit po yun sa mga telcos and then the telcos would submit to the NPC. Ang dami pong steps and all in all those steps, there's the risk na magkaroon ng leakage baka po pipicturan po yun ng iba, baka po gamitin po yung mismong pinang-register mo to register another without your knowledge and consent. So yun po yung mga siguro po um, titingnan din po natin sa, sa implementation just in case this, this pushes through. Kasi po baka po yung, yun as mentioned in other jurisdictions, nagkaroon pa po ng other problems na nagkaroon ng black market with respect to the SIM cards dahil nga po the hesitation na mag-register or hindi maka-register na exclude po financially or socially. Um, yun po yung mga siguro dapat din po nating tingnan. Pero just in case this pushes through, um, nandito naman po ang NPC and the, the Data Privacy Act will also apply um, in cases where there will be violation of unauthorized processing and other personal data breaches na magaganap in case dun po sa ating SIM registry. Madam thank Chair. you very thank thank you very much attorney grace no and uh, yeah it's 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 a uh, uh, concern na baka magkaroon pa ng additional problem and uh, i also uh, agree with what you said a while ago na yung sim registration doesn't uh, uh, warrant uh, it will uh, deter crimes but uh, again it's it's a question of how how you balance it because as mentioned already by uh, Senator Gachelia, napakasakit na mabalitaan na isang crime o isang terrorist act ay nangyari just because hindi 
naka nakarehistro ang isang uh, SIM card. So, uh, we are here to to support your uh, your uh, your uh, uh, position and if there's anything that we can do, syempre we are here to to help out. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may ask one more question to uh, NTC if it's okay. Go ahead, Senator Villanueva. Thank thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh sa NTC lang no, when you talk about uh, blocking of uh, stolen uh, phones, may we know how many uh, requests, if you have the data, how many requests did you receive for blocking uh, a stolen phone uh, in the last five years? And of this total number of requests to block uh, their stolen phones, how many have been uh, declined? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Uh, this is uh, Deputy Commissioner Gato Cabales, um, representing the Commissioner. Uh, we that, have, the, yes, Your Honor. We have the. Uh, okay, okay. Because because I was a little confused. I I know I know very well Commissioner Cordova, and, and he's not the one talking. But the name says uh, Commissioner Cordova. Okay. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, we have the data, but the data is not with me right now. But we can provide the data. Uh, most of the uh, of the uh, requests uh, for uh, uh, assistance coming from the public, Your Honor, are on the blocking of phones and SIM cards. So uh, the, it consists of around 80 to 85 percent of all the requests wow. is for blocking of uh, phones and and uh, SIM cards. And so sir, how many? Yeah, but how many, do you have at least a ballpark figure, how many uh, have been declined of this uh, request? Uh, Your Honor, we do not uh, decline requests. They, they have to prove first that they are the owners because uh, we have to avoid that someone requesting for blocking is not the owner of the phone. Really yeah, so so, so when, when you were able to... Uh, to uh, to show the uh, that, that you are indeed the owner, automatic na po yon na na na, na ba block. Uh, we order the blocking hook. Uh, and how long does it take? Uh, how long does it take for the agency to decide on on, on what actions to take? Uh, what is done, Your Honor, is we receive uh, the uh, the uh, request uh, now, consolidate all of this, and then order the telcos to block. So it takes around and one or two days. Are you sure? No. Just one to two days? Uh, okay. For the order, you know, for the order. Coming from for the order. For, for the, the order. order. For yeah. the order to, to, to come out. I mean, uh, sir, what other alternatives are available uh, for a victim of, uh, of uh, phone theft that will uh, allow him or her to protect uh, his or her data and uh, prevent unauthorized use? of his or her phone in the event that uh, the National Telecommunication Commission is unable to block his or her phone? Uh, yeah. Wala na. Uh, wala po talaga. Dapat may block po yun so that it cannot be used. Ayan nga. I, I'm, I'm stating this as a fact because uh, if we don't act on it, talagang wala nang ibang aasahan yung uh, nanakawan ng phone. Tama po? Uh, yes, no, no. it has to be blocked. Mm -hmm. And to clarify, does the blocking of a stolen phone uh, guarantee that the said phone is not anymore uh, usable by any unauthorized user? I mean, uh, even if the SIM card is uh, is replaced. Uh, you know, the, uh, the the blocking of the phone is we, we block the IMEI. But IMEI, uh, there are technologies that can change one of the of the digits in that uh, IMEI and if it is changed then it is no longer in the black list uh, but this is for older phones for the newer phones it is very difficult to do that well thank you I will not uh, uh, take long I just uh, thought that's a, a, a good discussion uh, uh, thank you madam chair for this opportunity thank you dear colleagues thank you sir Thank you. Okay. Um. Before I before I acknowledge Senator Marcos, I I would like to. I'm not sure if I already acknowledged Senator Coco Pimentel. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining our uh, hearing today. Um. If also, I would like to have the telcos ready. We will ask them if they have the 
uh, how they can cooperate in case this bill is passed into law. And then later on also the DTI, since they will be doing the distribution, especially in uh, different uh, outlets, if they will have the capability to, to roll it out. So Senator Marcos, go ahead, please. Yes. Um, since uh, Senator Joel Villanueva mentioned the fact that uh, these uh, phones are frequently stolen as well as the SIM cards, um, I was just curious if our bills on hand um, actually recommend a, uh, an, a mechanism for the consumer to replace a registered number, for example, as opposed to a phone, for example. Is there something we can do? Uh, will it be easier for the ones who lose uh, these uh, SIM cards to replace with the same number? Perhaps the NTC or uh, someone else could uh, uh, recommend. Mas madali ba, uh, Commissioner Liel, kapag uh, nakaregister, mas madali na ninyong uh, i-replace or obligahin yung ating mga telco na ma-replace yung SIM card? Um, Actually, uh, it's uh, assistant, uh, it's uh, assistant, uh, assistant uh, Cabarios is present. Go ahead, ah, okay, sir. it's assistant uh, Cabarios. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, yes, um, madali pong uh, palitan yun. The same, the same, uh, you use the same number. Uh, so the SIM card is uh, replaced. But the replaced SIM card can no longer be used. But the same number, pwede yung uh, gamitin yung the same number. Yes, I, yeah, I thought that was one of the distinct advantages of this uh, registration effort. Um, because for us, for example, who live in uh, mountainous areas, it's very, very frequent that we have uh, three, four, five SIM cards in the effort to have consistent uh, signal. Because uh, it's different from the strength of uh, different places. Lugar. So yun nga ang ginagawa namin madalas. So, uh, Madam uh, Chair, I was going to ask kung um, nasa prepaid load credits na po tayo. I had some questions for the NTC tungkol doon. Um, Senator Marcos, could you repeat your question kung nasa prepaid load, ano? Ah, hindi. Yung the, the other bill, sorry. In addition kasi to the registration of the SIM card, we also have on our agenda the uh, forever uh, prepaid loan credits. Uh, we're not there yet, uh, Senator Marcos. Ah, sige. Okay, uh, we, thank that, you. That's the next. Hopefully we can wrap this up soon. But I see the hand of Senator Gachalian up. Go ahead, please. But Madam Chair, just a reaction to uh, the Data Privacy Commission's uh, comment earlier. Uh, the comment of the Data Privacy Officer or the OIC uh, doesn't speak well to the existence of the Data Privacy Commission. We're only one out of the six countries that has a Data Privacy Commission. We have a very robust Data Privacy Act, Madam Chair. And uh, that's precisely the reason why we enacted a data privacy law, is to protect data privacy and find ways how to protect the privacy of our constituents. Kung pinapayagan nga mo natin magbenta ng mga raffle tickets sa SM at isulat po natin yung pangalan natin, yung phone number natin, yung address natin, eh bakit hindi mo natin payagan, hindi natin kaya protectahan yung privacy sa registration ng prepaid SIM card. My point of the matter, Madam Chair, yes, uh, there is a data privacy issue here, but we can find ways because we have the law that will protect our privacy and our data. Uh, we have a stringent law uh, and powers given to the Data Privacy Commission to impose on mechanisms and safeguards in order to protect our data privacy in light of this SIM card registration. So my point is, the Data Privacy Commission should come up with safeguards and suggestions on how to protect data privacy in light of this uh, SIM card registration, Madam Chair. I, I agree, uh, Senator Gachalian. I think that our resource persons present here today should be able to submit to us their position paper uh, with regards to their concerns on the bill and how they can help us make it more effective and judicious. So from the 
National Privacy Commission, as uh, Senator uh, Villarueva mentioned earlier, it's really a balancing act between protecting our privacy and protecting our actual physical safety uh, against uh, those that might um, do us harm using this technology. So I think now we can ask uh, the DTI, are you present here today, DTI or ASEC, uh, ASEC Claire, and Claire, uh, your position on this, uh, ma'am, because you will also assume the responsibility of the distribution of the SIM cards. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, and also to the Honorable um, Senators present this morning and all the other stakeholders who are here. Um, on the part of DTI, I recall that in the lower house, the DTI had submitted a position paper in support of a proposed um, bill uh, on, on the mandatory registration of SIMS. Um, that was in January of 2020. Um, we are still in the process also of preparing our position paper for the Senate, but for the purpose of this hearing, um, I would just like to, to also um, echo that, that DTI always has um, a very delicate balancing act, um, balancing the interest of businesses and consumers. But um, in this case, I come from the Consumer Protection Group and we are always looking at ways to safeguard consumers and all of us are consumers against tech scams, misleading advertisements, fraudulent sales promos. So we see that the registration um, part would help um, in preventing crimes and um, scams and, and um, other illegal acts that are prohibited under the Consumer, Protect Consumer Act. Um, but we, it should always be balanced, of course, with the requirements under the data privacy law. Thank you, Madam Chair. So my question again now, um, ASEC and would you be able to implement this properly? Will the DTI have the capability to ensure that the establishments that are carrying all of these loads will be made aware of the new law and that you can come up with the guidelines when it comes to the registration of the SIM cards? Um, Madam Chair, um, we, the DTI, I am sure, will be able to come out with the necessary guidelines um, and advisories. And also, we are very, uh, very proactive in our advocacy work that to ensure that it is, if there is a new law, that it is really cascaded to, to consumers. So yes, Madam Chair. Okay, so my question now is this. For example, it is registered, the SIM card is registered. Who will have that database? Who is going to handle the database for that? Is it uh, the DTI? Uh, will the telcos just have it available for uh, present, uh, available for it to be presented anytime government asks for it? That, that's actually one of the the things that we need to be able to sort out. Would the DTI be able to handle the database for all of that? And if not the, the DTI, let's say the telcos, which I want to hear from after the DTI, uh, how they're going to go about in the rollout of this uh, new regulation, if ever. Go ahead, uh, Attorney Ann again. Um, uh, ASEC Ann. Yes, um, Madam Chair, um, at this time, when, when there are, of course, for the postpaid, um, postpaid subscriptions, um, these are handled by, of course, um, the telcos and we work closely with, with the NTC um, for, for the, any concerns on, on mobile phones. So on who is going to, to handle the registry, I think that the ETI will have to work with the telcos and other other government agencies like NTC perhaps um, in in coming up with a database. But um, Madam Chair, to be very candid, uh, I, I'm not sure if it will be DTI that will handle that registry. This is something that we really need to sort out um, eventually. I don't know if there will be a technical working group after this so that we may be able to iron out some of the details uh, before we can submit a committee report. 
uh, but I'd like to hear from the telcos. Um, let's begin with Globe. Um, Globe or Smart, uh, it doesn't matter, or Tito. What, what I want to know is that if we pass this into law, how are you going to be able to implement this? Would you be able to keep a database of those that register their SIM that will that will be in the, in the millions maybe uh, in a few, in a week? So that will be millions of, of uh, registrations. And if the government has no capability to hold on to those names, uh, that you should be able to present it at any time uh, there is a. Uh, uh, a question on a particular SIM registration. So let's begin maybe with alphabetically, let's begin with D, Dito. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Grace and to the Honorable Senators here. I'm Adelta Mano po. I am uh, the Chief Administrative Officer of Dito. Um, allow me to say that um, we have already discussed uh, this bill with the highest levels of our leadership in Dito and we are supportive of SIM registration uh, we do understand that it will entail costs. Um, however, uh, we we laud the um, the initiative uh, in order to protect the public. I, I think well, what I do want to say, in fairness uh, to uh, the other uh, telcos, is since we are just uh, uh, starting up and we are setting up our systems, it is going to be uh, um, easier for us to be able to make SIM registration a part of our, our process. Um, and in fact, I've already talked with our technology team uh, in advance of today's hearing um, because we are supportive of this and we will already start figuring out how to make uh, SIM registration part of uh, our business process. Um, uh, those are my comments, uh, Madam Senator and uh, your honors, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your willingness to cooperate should uh, this pass into law. Maybe we can hear now from Globe Yes, yes, Madam Chairman. Good morning po. Uh, good morning sa mga miyembro po ng committee ito at sa mga kasama po ang resource person. Uh, kami naman po sa Globe, we submitted the collective wisdom of the Senate as well as the, as, as may be tempered by the comments of the various stakeholders. Ang malaking bonus po kasi dito ng batas nito is yung uh, digital or financial inclusiveness. Eh kung may uh, on top of that, makakatulong sa law enforcement, siguro bonus na lang po yun. But, gaya na nasabi ni, ni Engineer Pierre Galia, ang pinakamalaking at pinakasuccessful na test case, uh, use case nito ay sa uh, financial inclusion. Uh, but, um, as to the uh, collection of uh, information po, ma ma malaking bagay po, at uh, buti na lang po at napasa na po ang national ID system, so sa tingin po namin, kaakibat po ng implementasyon ng national ID system ay ang registration ng uh, SIM cards. Dahil po, para maging successful ang implementasyon ng data ng, ng SIM card registration, kailangan po may uh, isang database po na authentic, reliable, at credible po. Kaya pa nasabi ng data privacy, uh, malaki po ang bagay. Ma may, it's, there's a, several points of failure in the collection of uh, subscriber information. So, siguro, sa technical working group, pagtutuon natin na ito kung paano ito uh, ma-resolve Kasi, gaya din po ng nasabi ni Engineer Galia, meron pong mga problema about uh, number spoofing. So, pwede pong gayahin yung numero because of technology, magpapanggap na ang numero ito ay galing kunwari sa akin, pero yun pala ay isang galing sa isang scammer. So ma marami pong uh, failure points na pwede natin i-consider at uh, let's see how we can uh, work on it and improve on how can this bill be effectively implemented. Pangalawa po, I think it is important that uh, there will be ample time in the implementation of the SIM card registration dahil po alam natin na sa Pilipinas mahigit 90% ang prepaid SIM cards at uh, mas malaki po ito sa number of registered voters. So kung ang COMELEC ay nahihirapan sa pagrehistro ng mga registered voters, what more uh, with the prepaid SIM card registration. And then uh, siguro ang ample time, kaya tignan, suriin po natin mga panukala na realistic po ang timetable. Dahil sa pinaka-recent na implementasyon nito sa Nigeria, 
na in-implement noong 2011 hanggang ngayon po ay hindi pa fully implemented dahil sa maraming problema. So, uh, yun po, uh, I think uh, magandang tignan po ang, ang mga kailana ng mga failure ng implementation ng mand mandatory simple registration tulad ng sa Mexico at sa Canada. But, uh, gaya nga nasabi ko, ang pinakamalaking challenge po nito is yung timetable to uh, register. Siguro sa so kung may mechanism na biometric capture through online means, well and good, that will hasten the process. But uh, sa ngayon, mano-mano po talaga ngayon. And then, uh, medyo gaya ng nasabi ng National Privacy Commission, pwede pong magkasabot yung nagre-registro at yung kumukuha ng registration. So medyo yun ang malaking, uh, tingnan po natin na issue kung paano natin po masolusyonan. So yun lamang po. At uh, gaya ng nasabi ko, si, ang malaking uh, use case nito ay sa for, for digital and financial inclusion. Yun lamang po, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tubayan. Actually, we appreciate your giving us a very realistic uh, scenario. Oo nga naman, ano, mas maraming SIM card registrants kesa sa voters. At saka hindi lamang yun, talagang mabilis siguro mas nagpapalit ang mga nagpaparehistro ng kanilang SIM card. So again, the repository of that information will be crucial to the success of the implementation should we have one. Um, now, can I, can we, may we hear from the SMART representative or the representative of SMART Corporation? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Th thank you for uh, uh, extending uh, your invitation to, uh, to SMART to attend uh, this hearing. And uh, good morning also to uh, all the members of this committee and uh, to my fellow resource speakers. So I, I'll, I'll, I will not uh, repeat or belabor anymore on uh, the comments stated by uh, my co-resource speakers. Uh, and um, we agree uh, on uh, the, the reasons that they have stated. And actually, since uh, this was passed in third reading by the House no, in the last Congress, and we filed our position paper there uh, previously, we support this uh, bill no, of uh, SIM registration. In fact, even the umbrella organization of uh, telcos, which is the Philippine Chamber of Telecom Operators, have already expressed also their support for this uh, SIM registration. But in addition to the reasons uh, earlier stated, we uh, support this for the full development of a robot as e-commerce industry because as the aphorism goes, a rising tide raises all ships. So a uh, stronger economy will be good for us and will augur well for all uh, uh, business no, in, in the country. So but then again, uh, the devil is in the details and uh, we hope probably if a, uh, a working group can also fully discuss all these nitty gritty issues involved uh, as mentioned by uh, all the different uh, resource uh, panelists uh, this morning so that we can thresh out how to best implement uh, this bill if ever it gets passed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Thank you. I think I think somebody's uh, somebody's mic might be on. Either your your dog is hungry already, reminding us it's <laughs> eleven fifty one. So let's uh, kind of. Hey, um, Madam Chair. Rush I just process. wanted to log in, Madam Chair. Um, Sure. Yeah, I'd like to acknowledge the presence again of our majority leader. But uh, Senator uh, Joel Villanueva, did you have a follow-up question to that? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. It's uh, good that uh, we were able to hear uh, from Dito, from Globe, and uh, SMART. Uh, just just one quick question, Madam Chair. First of all, I, I, I appreciate that uh, all of them are uh, in unison in... Uh, uh, supporting the registration of uh, of, uh, of of SIM cards, but uh, currently, Madam Chair, my question is: What happens? <clears throat> what happens to the activated SIM cards? Will will the cell phone uh, numbers of the activated SIM cards uh, be recycled and given to new users? May mga narinig po kasi tayo and nakakarating din sa ating opisina yung mga experience ng iba na uh, dahil recycled ang number nila, they are being harassed by, uh, for example, yung uh, debt collectors of the person uh, who previously used the number. Um, uh, this is, these, are, these are questions that I think uh, uh, would, 
would 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 elicit uh, uh, a good discussion on why do phone companies uh, recycle phone numbers anyway? Um, who are you addressing the question to, Senator? Joel? That, that is for Globe Smart and uh, Dito, or I mean, for for our. Uh, and I think Engineer Tito Pierre is also raising his hand. If, if oh, Madam Chair, can, uh, um, Madam Chair, with the permission of Senator Joel. Go sorry, ahead, Majority Leader. Yeah, sorry, Madam Chair. Sorry, Senator Joel, if, if it's all right, because I have to go back to the create. I have a pre buy come for create. That's why I couldn't come log in early. Uh, my apologies to everyone. Um, may I just read my uh, short, it's only a one page opening statement, Senator Joel, and then I have to log out again because I have to go back to. Uh, talking to Sharon Garin of uh, the House for Create. Um, You're the majority with, leader. With the permission. No, no, with the permission <laughs> of everybody because I am uh, the principal author at uh, Senate Bill Number 109 because it's my uh, uh, bill. So, Madam Chair, go thank ahead, you very majority much. Majority leader. Thank yes, you very so much, Madam ahead. Chair. To all our guests today, uh, magandang umaga po. To my colleagues, magandang umaga po. Uh, Madam Chair, we filed Senate Bill Number 109 in 2019. So we had a we had in mind the intent to prevent actually what had happened to our colleague, Senator Winga Chalyan, and what happens to daily, daily to Filipinos all over the country. We can't deny that SIM cards have become a necessity for most people, almost as important as, actu as having actually identification cards. And people need SIM cards to communicate, to access the internet to mobile devices, to run cashless transactions. And SIM cards have undeniably made our lives easier. But with all this ease comes risk. At the moment, there is no way for us to guarantee the security of, for SIM card users, or guarantee security rather for SIM card users. Senator Wynn was not the first victim of that kind of theft and will not be the last. So, so as long as we allow SIM cards to remain unregistered. Last year, the Bank of Philippine Islands and Banco de Oro warned their clients to take caution against scammers pretending to be bank representatives contacting them for private information, including mobile numbers, which can then be used as a gateway to their social media and online banking applications. This particular phenomenon is what, the SIM, what, is, what is called rather SIM swapping. And it also happens the other way around as when scammers call up cell service providers to pretend to be clients wishing to update their contact numbers. But registering SIM cards will not only strengthen the security against SIM-related uh, financial fraud, this move would also cut down the growing underground industry of social media bot farms in the Philippines, which very often involve foreign nationals taking advantage of a relatively cheaper service provider fees and more importantly, unscrupulous exploiting of workers by bypassing our labor laws. Regulating access to SIM cards would also limit the ability of criminals to freely contact their targets. Anonymously sent random messages or death threats will now be traceable to a registered individual. We would also be able to limit terrorist acts that rely on mobile phone activities. As in 2019, when the military is able to access surveillance footage of Abu Sayyaf terrorists operating a mobile phone that was possibly used to trigger the explosives that went off one Sunday in Holo, leaving 21 dead. The anonymity provided by unregistered SIM cards has allowed many criminals of all shades the protection they need in order to commit their crimes. There is a whole host of illegal activities that we will be able to address with our SIM card registration law. So I fervently hope and pray that we can fast track this bill and protect our SIM card using public as soon as possible. Maraming salamat po, uh, Chairperson and uh, you all know the importance of this. We've been pushing this uh, since 2007. So hopefully, um, I, I commit to you, Madam Chair, that we will prioritize this in plenary discussion. With the help of the seatmates and our colleagues, uh, we can make sure that we can pass this as soon as possible. Maraming po salama, Chairperson. I may have Thank to you. leave now because I have to go back to the discussion on Create Assembly. Uh, representing the Senate for the pre bicam conference appointed by Senator Pia. So well, good luck. Uh, good luck with your uh, good luck for your uh, bicam majority leader. Thank um, you very much. Go ahead, Senator Joel. Please uh, continue with your questions again. 
repeat. Yes, uh, I uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, God bless you, Majority Leader. Uh, I have a pending question with regards to uh, uh, SIM card deactivation and reactivation, Madam Chair. Actually, I would uh, share also the experience of uh, my son, Jaden. Um, somebody's texting him and uh, 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 or, or sometimes calling him and uh, uh, they th he thought that uh, he is another uh, person. No? So, so I just wanted to ask uh, and uh, I'm sure... Uh, I think Engineer uh, Tito Pierre was uh, raising his hand a while ago. Maybe he could uh, help us uh, with that question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Go ahead um, with your response. Madam Chair, is that, uh, is that for me? Yes. Uh, all right. Um, Ma'am, uh, if you, if very quickly, let me uh, address a few questions earlier. Uh, I did not want to interrupt the discussion, but uh, first on the question of the database, um, I hope that the body realizes that there will be uh, a, a, a database for registered numbers, and this is in relation to the law that uh, was filed initially by Senator Gachalian, the uh, mobile mobile. Uh, the Mobile Number Portability Act. So this allows uh, numbers to move from uh, one provider to the other. And because the approach used by the NTC is to set up a third party, uh, there will be by default uh, registration of SIM cards as, as we go along. So there's that already in place. On the, on the uh, question of Senator Villanueva on how, on why uh, see, numbers are being recycled. This th this is not new. This actually also happens in landlines in countries where landlines are also uh, prevalent. And this is the reason why. New numbers are finite. And because they're finite, uh, it is only good business sense for a number that has been deactivated for several months or even years to be used again. And that's why there's going to be new listings and updates. So this is something that is not new. And we should not take away this uh, flexibility from, uh, from Globe, from Dito, and from Smart, because uh, this is just uh, plain business sense. We do not want to have, eventually, in their systems, uh, databases full of unused numbers. Uh, and that they cannot use. That's going to be server load. and. Uh, that's also, of course, going to entail cost on their part. That's that's going to be uh, difficult for them. But, Madam Chair, if uh, if the if you will allow me to proceed, I will. Uh, I would like to put forth for the for the committee a possible option on on addressing the issues that they have uh, that they have raised. Wait a minute, please. Uh, I, I I still have uh, the floor. No, I, I I asked that question, and thank you for for your answer and uh, while I agree with some of your statements, uh, if you're being harassed already, uh, hindi, hindi ho makatarungan yun, no? Pag uh, binigyan ka ng numero ng isang uh, provider at uh, hinaharas ka na and continuously you're saying that it is not you pero you're still being harassed, ikaw pa yung may problema, no? Another thing that I'd like to raise, uh, Madam Chair, is what will happen uh, to the cell phone numbers of uh, SIM cards use in the commission of crimes. Uh, for example, yung, yung numbers na ito, no? will these numbers uh, be deactivated after resolution of the case? Uh, will they be reactivated subsequently? There must be some, some sort of a, a, a system na pagka ito nagamit sa mga ganitong uri ng uh, krimen, then we just have to uh, uh, block that number, uh, uh, for, if not for a long time, forever, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair? Go ahead. Uh, the way it's done in more developed uh, jurisdictions, uh, Madam Chair, is this. During the pendency of the case, uh, the number is not going to be used. So it's, it's stuck there. You make, a, you make a complaint, whether it's criminal or it's civil, uh, the number is not going to be used during the pendency of the case. And then, uh, depending on the regulator, 
that number will not be used for a specific period after the case has been resolved. Typically, the, the, the time element is six months to three years. So hindi po siya nagagamit for that time. It is inactive for a finite period after the case has been resolved. So there are two periods that we're talking about here. First is the period, the period of the case uh, as it goes along in the court. And then once uh, there's no need for it to be used as evidence anymore, then it's going to wait another uh, three months or sometimes one year. And that's the only time they can recycle it. It cannot be immediately uh, recycled. In fact, uh, the way that it's being done right now, Madam Chair, for in defense of the telcos a little bit, they don't immediately recycle numbers. They recycle them after, a, after an inactive period. So it, the inactive period is typically uh, six months, if I remember uh, a previous hearing in the House. Um, that being said, if we want to improve that, maybe we can ask the telcos to improve the inactivity period to something longer before they recycle the numbers. Uh, this is not also unreasonable because the telcos themselves request for additional numbers from the NTC as they can stand it. So there's, there's two things that's going on for them there. They can request for new numbers and then they can eventually recycle old numbers after a reasonable period of inactivity. But to answer Senator Joel's okay. uh, billionaire's question, thank you. they should not immediately recycle. Thank you. Yes, thank, yes thank you very much, uh, sir. No? And uh, again, I'm not saying that this is unreasonable on the part of the, 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 the telcos, but uh, I'm saying what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, we have to protect our subscribers uh, from being harassed. And yes, I agree, it, it should be a longer period of time. Um, again, uh, with the SIM card registration, this would, would, would help the telcos. And uh, two, let me state for the record that this representation supported uh, Senator Wynn's uh, mobile uh, portability law. And I'm also supporting that uh, law for, for uh, uh, having a, a, a same uh, phone number na that would last forever. Yun yung uh, uh, gusto natin mangyari din. No? So again, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, Engineer Tito. Thank you to Senator Villanueva. Um, I guess moving forward, I, I thank um, Engineer Gala for reminding us about the database that was already uh, created by the, uh, the, the separate group that will handle the database that was created by the NTC. Uh, I think this is the law and the portability of the numbers. Um, I would like to ask the NTC now an update on that, if they've actually implemented it. Mr. Cabarios? Yes, Your Honor, yes. Uh, Are you aware of this um, commitment by the NTC to put up that separate entity that will manage the database of information for cell numbers? Uh, yes, Your Honor, this is the mobile number portability implementation of the, uh, of the law, Your Honor. Um, the uh, three telcos, Your Honor, has uh, created a joint venture in 20, uh, 2019. Uh, they call this Telecom Connectivity Inc. And this uh, joint venture company, Your Honor, has uh, 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 con contracted uh, uh, a mobile number portability service provider. Is they call it uh, the Cyniverse. And uh, in their submission, Your Honor, in 2020, uh, they said that uh, the intra uh, number portability, meaning to say prepaid to postpaid, postpaid to prepaid, uh, intra company, will be implemented by uh, the last quarter of 2020. And the full implementation is first quarter of 2021. But uh, the latest update, Your Honor, because of the uh, of the uh, community quarantine that uh, was uh, implemented in in the Philippines, uh, they have moved the uh, the uh, implementation, Your Honor. So the intra uh, company uh, mobile number portability will be implemented by the first quarter of this year, and. Uh, uh, 
I think no, the second quarter of this year, and full implementation is the third quarter of the year. That means uh, by June of this year, the intra company uh, will be implemented, and by September 30 of this year, the uh, full commercial operation will run. Okay, am, am I understanding this correctly? So the government basically delegated the private sector to be the repository of that information on the cell phone numbers and the telecommunications company formed another company called the Intra Company. Uh, it's a joint venture owner owned by the three telcos. Uh, the telecom okay, which three telcos again? Uh, Dito Telecom, uh, Dito uh, Telecommunic Corporation, Runner, Globe, and uh, Smart. They how about the other? Okay, how Smart. about are these the only three providers of uh, cell numbers? Uh, mobile phone uh, network providers, Your Honor, at present, yes. They're, they're the only okay. Three. Um, I would like to hear an update uh, just from one company because we're running out of time and I, I'm, I'm hoping that the next uh, topic will be easier because I think it's for the interest of uh, the majority. But I'd like to ask Globe, what is your update on this supposed uh, joint uh, venture, whatever you call it, between all the telcos uh, managing the database? Sir, your mic is still off. Uh, Mr. Mr. Tobayan, your your mic is still off. Mr. Tobayan. Okay. Um, can we hear from Smart? Mr. Ebay. Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes. So um, we actually submitted uh, an update to the NTC uh, yesterday. Uh, the update comes from the Mobile Number Portability Consortium, which is called the Telecommunications Connectivity Inc. It's con a consortium composed of uh, DITO, Globe, and SMART, uh, specifically to implement the mandate of the law, the Mobile Number Portability Act. And uh, by virtue of uh, that, uh, that law, which allows us to get a um, mobile number portability platform provider similar to what occurred in other countries, uh, we chose Cineverse as our uh, platform provider. And uh, since last year, well, we have been uh, working closely with um, Cineverse to implement uh, the uh, platform. No? But uh, uh, of course, the there are uh, there are a lot of things which happened last year which uh, have uh, undoubtedly caused some delay on the part of uh, the three telcos and Cineverse to to uh, implement this. The original target was really June of this year, but because of the pandemic, I guess um, uh, everything you know, uh, else got affected also. And so uh, we submitted our uh, revised timeline yesterday that. Uh, uh, by June, we will start the inter-operator inter testing, and uh, the full commercial launch will probably be on September of this year, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ibai. Okay, um, so we have that system in place already. Should we pass this bill, then the registration can hopefully be absorbed by that um, intra-company there's a possibility that it can be done, right? But, you know, limited capacity, Madam Chair, because, uh, well, we assume that the, not not everyone at at a point at a certain point will will have to port. No, so the the process will actually first, of course, take into consideration only those subscribers who will have to port. Uh, but then again, um, similar to well, uh, when 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 this issue on SIM registration was was uh, raised uh, as far back as 10 years ago, correct? Uh, as correctly pointed out by Senator Big Zubiri. We've been in touch also with other carriers, no? like in Malaysia, MCMC, what they did was they implemented this alongside their implementation of the national ID, their national ID act. No? So uh, contemporaneous with their registration of the national ID, they had their SIM registration uh, process. So 
uh, we don't know if that is best practice, but uh, again, no, um, maybe we, the devil is in the details. Maybe this can be discussed adequately in a technical working group, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ibai. Again, the importance of the technical working group after this, because we need uh, the honest opinion of experts who will have to implement and the success of the bill will only really be in the implementation later on when it's a law. So with that, uh, I would like to move on to our next uh, bill in consideration, which is the non-expiration uh, of our uh, load. If there is a presentation from anybody in the panel, Then, okay, so the non-expiration data, so up until recently, all telecommunications companies are subjecting the data of their sub subscribers to an expiration period. In October of last year, however, Digital Telco GOMO was launched in the Philippines and offered a mobile data of up to 25 gigabytes without an expiration. GOMO is operated in the Philippines by GLOBE, and we laud their initiative. GOMO stands for Go Out More Often. It is the first fully digital mobile service provider in the Philippines, a mobile virtual network operator, MVNO, or an entity that offers services similar to a mobile network operator, MNO, such as GLOBE and SMART, but doesn't own any radio frequency. So MVNOs enter into a business agreement with MNO so they can use the latter's network for its services. It can be found in four markets, Singapore, Ireland, Thailand, and the Philippines. As an introductory offer, customers may avail of GOMO's 5G ready SIM card and 25 um, gigabytes no expiry data for only 199 pesos. This will increase to 299 by January 2021. So maybe I can um, ask Globe to talk to us about it. Now you have this, that your, your GOMO rollout, but I'd like to ask for the regular subscribers of Globe and Smart, would you be able to absorb a non-expiration of uh, data? So let's begin with Globe again. I hope this time, uh, Globe, uh, Mr. Tobayan, are you ready? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Can you tell us uh, the principle behind GOMO and then also with the non-expiration of data, would you be able to uh, absorb this also in your regular um, products? Uh, Madam Chair, as I understand it, GOMO is just a limited product that targets a certain segment of a market which uh, ha have a preference for non-expiring loads. It's not launched, it's a limited, it is a limited rollout, and it's a limited number of numbers because that is only the uh, a, a number of subscribers that are capacitized by the system. Uh, since it's launched last uh, October 1, 2020, we have not seen a, a robust or a, a fast take up on the product and uh, it's actually uh, as uh, it's a niche market. It targets a niche market, and it's not really. Uh, I don't think at the, at the at this time it can be offered uh, as well to our regular uh, customers for uh, three following reasons. Number one, uh, it's the choice of consumers. They have a choice actually of the uh, the convenience of having a postpaid card, a ah, postpaid uh, phone. Uh, with the easy connection and then uh, monthly bills, as well as for prepaid, they have the freedom from getting immediate connection without uh, ne the necessity of providing proof of uh, income, proof of uh, uh, financial capacity to pay for telco services. And uh, it's actually designed for mass customization and uh, with all the promos available for prepaid customers, they have the power of choice to customize their consumption based on their need. We have uh, various offers ranging only for, ranging from those required by learning from home 
uh, working from home, uh, ga gaming. Um, sir, and I'm the sorry, like, the, 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 respectfully, I'd like to interrupt you. Okay. Um, instead of going through um, all of those promotional statements, can you just tell me the three reasons why you can't offer this to all your subscribers? Yes. Uh, you, okay. One, two, three. What are they? Well, first thing is the, uh, co co consumer choice, Madam Chair. So if we offer it, it will limit actually uh, consumer choice. Why, and, why uh, wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I choose the one with the no expiration? Uh, it, it's probably with the cost uh, as well, Madam Chairman. And uh, it's Bakit the capacity. Hindi naman po. Malulugi ba kayo kung walang expiration yung mga... Bayad na yun eh, di ba? Tama po, bayad na po yun. But uh, in terms of re revenue recognition, it's an utang sa Pelco po yan. So if okay, you are, normally, revenue, yeah. in other countries, are there expirations? Yes, Madam Chair. It's, uh, so it's here the in, norm. Okay, for Globe in particular, how long is the the, the life of a loan, for example? Well, right now, Madam Chairman, there's a uniform lifetime of a load uh, with the issuance of joint memorandum circular issued by DTI and uh, NPC based on their study of the carrying, carrying cost uh, on the carrying uh, the, the length of the prepaid uh, number or prepaid load. So right now it's one year regardless of denomination. But for, there are also ex exceptions under the NPC cir circular which is for volume, volume purchases or promos. That's an exception under the NPC rules. Okay, sir. Um, so you're saying if there's an option for non-expiration for all of your subscribers, that will be an additional cost to the public? Uh, 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 Madam Chair, it will be an added cost and it might uh, price out, uh, uh, it will limit the choice of the subscribers, basically. Okay, and, uh, I'd like to hear, uh, sir, uh, Sorry to interrupt you. I'd like to hear from Engineer Gala his thoughts on the matter. Sir? Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, this issue of non-expiring load, uh, we've already discussed this at length in the lower house. Uh, it's like this. One of the, the main reason why loads do have to expire is because they become, uh, they become cost. They become direct cost to the telcos because they have to be maintained in their database records forever and ever amen if they do not expire so you can have a number that's linked to let's say one peso and if that does not expire that is going to be uh that's going to be in itself capacity in this inside the databases of the companies so one of the things that we suggested in in the lower house was the expiry should be treated like uh, uh, how the banks used to do it with passbooks. So you have a minimum maintaining balance that if it is, uh, if your account is inactive for X amount of time, babawasan siya ng piso, for example, for every day until it gets zeroed out. So in this in this way, it becomes a win-win solution for uh, for the consumers and for the telcos. The only question now is, what is the definition of inactive? Is it one year na hindi naglo-load, hindi nag-SMS, -e hindi nagtatawag, hindi gumagamit ng data itong number na to? Or is it going to be six months? Or is it going to be three months? And so on. So that's the balance that just has to be struck. That, that's actually quite, uh, in, that, that's quite helpful. Now, I'd like to ask now, uh, maybe uh, PLDT, what do you think is a reasonable minimum amount for it to be considered um, active? Um, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we have only a, a, a very, very small portion of the subscriber base of PLDT that uses SIM. But nonetheless, uh, Madam Chair, just to answer your question, uh, the amount of time so far that has been considered after a thorough deliberation by the NPC, the DICT, and uh, even the DTI is one year. And so far, that has been uh, acceptable to all the carriers. And we've uh, actually been uh, implementing that, Your Honor, the Chair. Okay, so let's say I, uh, I have a, a cell phone with about 1,000 pesos in load, which I haven't used. 
because that phone is only for emergencies. So regardless of the amount after one year that expires. As far as I know, but uh, I, I would defer to the wisdom of the mobile carrier representatives here, Your Honor. Um, how about PLDP? Smart, Madam Chair. Smart. I mean smart. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, good afternoon again. So, ma Madam uh, Chair, may, may I give a brief uh, just background on, on uh, what, what, what happened or the history of this uh, non-expiry load issue? Go ahead, start, go ahead. Yeah. Well, short this actually, very short. Very short, very short. But I'm sure this actually started in, in 2012 when the DTI removed all the uh, expiry on gift checks. No? And uh, rightfully so, the DTI uh, did that because uh, gift checks are in the nature of similar to cash. No? So there's really no uh, rationale why uh, they should expire. Uh, but then again, when this was raised uh, from 2012 up to uh, 20. 17, no? um, this issue came back and forth to the DTI, uh, NTC carriers. And then eventually when the DICT was organized, the DICT also uh, chimed in in the issue. And so in 2017, December, the DTI, the DICT and NTC came up with a joint memorandum circular, which took into consideration all factors, meaning in, which also included what Engineer Galia mentioned, which is the carrying cost. Um, for, uh, for the information of this uh, committee, if you are a prepaid uh, user and uh, your load expires, you have 180 days actually to enjoy incoming calls. No, So you can still receive incoming calls. And that is a, a cost on the part of the telcos. While if you are a postpaid subscriber, the moment you do not pay your bill, you get redirected after 30 days. And then after 60 days, you get uh, redirected, meaning you can only receive incoming calls. And after 60 days, uh, your phone outright gets uh, disconnected. So there is uh, an even uh, application there. No? So the, the compromise between um, the carriers, uh, DTI, NTC, and the DICT way back June, uh, well, right, December 2017, was really to come up with a one-year load uh, period so that all interests will be balanced, uh, Madam Chair. So that, that, is, that is all uh, to submit. Thank you. Okay, um, I think there should really be a further technical discussion on this. In principle, it is very good uh, for the consumers uh, to have the assurance that their load will not expire. But of course, we also understand that it might be untenable later on to manage a database um, full of registered numbers, especially if we pass this but has been inactive. So there's also, there's, there should also be a responsibility on the part of the consumer when it comes to uh, their prepaid cards. So unless there's another question uh, coming from our senators here, I would like to, uh, okay, I see the hand of Senator Aini, but before that, um, I will ad adjourn this hearing and then we will just convene as a technical working group so that we can polish uh, this bill for our committee report. Senator Marcos is recognized. Yes, with regard to the second item, um, with regard to the second item and on our agenda about the prepaid load credits that will not expire, uh, I was just curious, this is a really ignorant question. Um, with the NTC, is there a technical reason for implementing an expiration date? Is it simply the uh, um, burden of uh, managing a huge database? Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, the uh, argument then was uh, the carrying cost, Your Honor, because your, your uh, uh, number is maintained uh, in the uh, database of um, Delcos. But when was this decided? Uh, Your Honor, please. When was the uh, undue cost or difficulty of uh, the carrying cost determined? Uh, the, Para the, first, na yun eh. yeah, the, the first one was issued in 2009 and then followed by the Joint Memorandum Circular in 2017. Uh, the main argument then for 2009 is the carrying cost. 
That's why meron pong period yung uh, uh, amount of the load and then the expiry date, uh, expiry period. And uh, ganyan po nangyayari. But Hindi kasi ang pagkaalala ko, originally, yung previous setup, two months lang. Yung kauna-unahan prepaid. Tapos, uh, pinahaba ng one year. Ngayon, since 2017, we're all aware the capacities for uh, databases, our capacity for storage and uh, and maintaining all the different uh, storage facilities is much, much greater. It's been so enhanced, particularly during this pandemic period. Bakit pa kailangan ng expiration date? I mean, technically speaking. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, we fully support, Your Honor, the, the bill of uh, uh, removing the expiry of uh, prepaid loads. Uh, we... okay, pero technically, tama ba yung sinasabi na undue burden yung uh, uh, database na lalawak labis-labis kasi nga pakahaba na at saka non-expired pa? So they be really carrying um, a cost that is such a burden or data that is so great that is unmanageable? It is our view, Your Honor, that for uh, as number of, of subscribers increase, that cost uh, is decreased, uh, your, your Honor. And it is not the same as the wild. In the wild, because it's not dedicated yung line sa you, eh? so there is that carrying cost. But in the, in the mobile, wala po yun, eh? because there is no uh, line that is dedicated to you. So lumilit na lumilit po yan. And that's the reason why uh, we support the non-expiration, provided that uh, pagka ho hindi ginagamit, dapat nababawasan nyo hanggang maging zero. Kasi uh, oh. for us also to manage so the the telephone numbers, cell phone numbers, because it's, these are uh, limited uh, resources, Your Honor. Uh, so pagka hindi na ginagamit talaga, we have to uh, recycle the number. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yun din ang pagkaintindi ko eh. Uh, just to give us an idea of the economic benefit to this bill, does the DICT or the NTC have any information how much prepaid load actually expired in the last year or two years? Are we able to calculate kung magkano ang nawalan pera niyan? Uh, wala po kami data no na. But the detail ko sa so they, they have the data because they maintain all the, the, their own databases. Okay, thank you. If we could ask the telcos if there's any way of accessing such information, we'd be grateful so that we know uh, how much impact this bill would have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so um, are you are you still ponder, uh, prepondering the question, Senator Marcos? Or yes, you, I'm. Uh, I'm just uh, asking, in as much as you're going to. Uh, um, recess into a TWG, uh, there's still time for them to submit more information regarding the um, actual timeline of uh, expiring prepaid load para makita natin kung gaano kalaki ito. Napakalaki nito eh, yun ang pagkaintindi ko. And uh, I think that uh, there's a huge economic loss to all the buyers. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will ask the telcos to please submit that also in our technical working group. Senator Gachalian is recognized. Madam Chair, uh, before we uh, terminate and convert into a TWG, I just want to underscore that the issue here is not technical anymore, but the carrying cost. And uh, you had a hearing uh, on this bill last 2017, and that was also the issue before. That's why in the bill that we submitted, uh, we allowed the telcos to uh, deduct one peso every day uh, if your uh, prepaid SIM card uh, is inactive. So, and I agree completely with Pierre. I think the challenge here is to determine uh, the definition of dormancy, determine the definition of inact inactiveness, um, and determine the duration of this of, of dormancy and being inactive. Uh, those so that the uh, bill will be clear on when the telcos should start charging the consumers. But the issue of technology is non-existent anymore. Meaning they can the telcos can implement a uh, zero 
uh, expiry or no expiry of uh, prepaid SIM card as long as they will be allowed to charge uh, the consumer carrying costs whenever the prepaid becomes dormant or inactive. So if I understand you correctly, Senator Gachalian, what you're saying is uh, there may be a cost to the consumer, meaning little by little their uh, load will diminish based on their usage. If let's say they don't use it after uh, a year uh, and they don't keep a minimum balance little by little, like in a bank as stated by Engineer Gala, you can... Uh, remove a certain amount? Is that what you're getting correct, at? Correct, Paul. Yes, correct, Paul. We just have to define the duration of when the card becomes inactive. For example, if you don't use it for call and text, let's say for one year, then your card becomes inactive. And that's the time the telcos can charge one peso per day until your load uh, disappears. So, and that's our way also of surrendering that number because may mga cases, ma'am, that you, uh, you, you misplace your prepaid card. And uh, when you misplace those prepaid cards, uh, it becomes a hanging item. So, this is a, by, by automatically detecting one peso, uh, it enables the telcos to automatically re retire also that uh, lost card. Okay. Um, so that will be the, the tack of our discussion for the technical working group. Um, aside from also the management of the database, uh, what will be the minimum amount? Uh, how long will the duration be? What concession that telco companies will be able to give? Um, so finally, uh, this is the third item in our agenda, is Senate Bill Number 1880, which requires a rollover data system for the subscribers of all internet service providers. So aside from the load for mobile uh, cell phone data, now we have this one for the internet. So again, it will be, uh, I would like to hear from Dito, Globe, and then um, Smart. Uh, yes, Globe Madam first. Senator. Uh, Dito, yeah. Dito, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Senator. Uh, in regard to Bill uh, number 1880, um, we are uh, generally supportive uh, uh, of the bill, um, and we understand the reasons why the honorable senators are pushing for uh, the rollover allocation of unused data until the end of the year. So it's possible to do that. How about, um, how about Globe? Madam Chair, actually, we're already doing some rollover. Uh, it's part of the, our offerings for prepaid. And uh, I think uh, I'm not just uh, uh, certain as to how long it will be rolled over, but we do have a uh, rollover promise already, Madam Chairman. Thank you, sir. PLDT? I mean, I'm sorry, SMART. I get confused. Okay, SMART. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, similar to uh, GLOBE, uh, Smart also has uh, already implemented the uh, data rollover in uh, in its products. Uh, in, 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 and uh, generally, also we, we we support the 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 bill. But um, we'd like just to point out that uh, maybe similar also to the uh, prepaid load expiry, there are also uh, some technical considerations which uh, just have to be also. Uh, uh, considered in, in, in implementing uh, the said uh, bill, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, before I adjourn this hearing, I would like to remind uh, some of our participants here today, depending on who will be called to join the technical working group, because we might have to divide it into uh, phases. Uh, you have to be able to come in with your suggestions that are clear because the importance of this bill is, is uh, how effective it will be implemented. So if you would like for it to be less difficult on your part, then you have to do your best to present a realistic way of rolling this out. Okay? Kasi kung ang gagawin yung trabaho eh, parang malamya lang, remember, it will affect you. And we are not the experts. The lawmakers rely on the technical advice of the resource persons. 
and also the balancing act provided by advocates like the democracy.net and also the National Privacy Commission. So all of that will come into play and, and this is going to be, it will, it will hit your bottom line and I, I remind the telcos that if you don't suggest something that is uh, practical, that is easily implemented, eventually it might be difficult for you and um, may not be commercially viable. So help us, help us draft this committee report properly. Um, so unless there's another question from any of the senators, it's getting late. I, I, I would like to attend another hearing that's quite interesting on uh, constitutional amendments. Um, are there any other questions? None? Okay, uh, please be advised that my office will keep track of the submissions that were requested by the senators as well as myself. And also you will be notified of the date for the dates for the technical hearings. Um, all the senators are invited to attend, um, although this is not uh, an official hearing. So with that, um, going once, going twice, this hearing is now adjourned. Thank you to all our resource persons for your time today. Thank you, Madam, Thank you, Madam Chair. 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 Thank you, Madam Chair.